The Mountain Blade series is renowned for its modding and Bannerlord is no different. There are an absolute ton of overhaul mods currently in development and today I thought it would be fun to dive in and take a look at five that I am extremely excited for and hopefully they will release later this year or early next year. I will of course also link both the mod DB page and all the discords for these mods down below in the description so if you want to go ahead and keep up to date with them I highly recommend you go ahead and either join them or check out the mod DB. And if you want to see more videos like this on the channel, don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below and let me know. I'm more than happy to do more of these news related videos where I basically keep you guys up to date with the ongoings of the Bannerlord modding world. For our first mod today, we have to take a look at probably what is the most anticipated mod out there for Bannerlord and that is the Kingdom of Arda Lord of the Rings modification. This mod looks to completely change Bannerlord from the very core and foundation of the game. Of course, adding in a completely new Middle Earth campaign map, they plan on having multiplayer, a brand new story mode which will go alongside the sandbox mode which will allow you to play as characters such as Aragorn in the Battle of Helm's Deep, Gandalf in Pelennor Fields, the Witch King, and so many more characters in these kind of glimpses of the Lord of the Rings narrative. On top of that, they also plan on having several playable races such as Elves, Dwarves, Dunninglands, Orcs, Hobbits, goblins, urukai, as well as a ton of grotesque creatures such as trolls, mumikil, wargs, and even ents. On top of this, the mod does plan on having a completely custom soundtrack, and that's not even to go ahead and talk about all of the cool custom mechanics that they do currently have planned. They also have recently been showing off uh, some of the actual campaign main menu mock-ups as well, and there will actually be an evil version of this. So, for example, if you are in your last campaign, siding with the forces of evil you will be able to go ahead and uh, seek I, I assume maybe Minis Morgul or even Baradur. On top of that they have also been showing off the work they've been doing on the Donlan faction that does seem like their main focus at the moment that's kind of what we're getting a great little look at and the models look like you would expect absolutely beautiful and one of the cool things about this look at Donlan is that's really one of the factions that we don't know a ton about the mod itself is heavily focused in on the movie kind of art style and the wetter style of costume design. So Dunland is one of those factions which really they have kind of free reign on because you don't really get to take a look at them. So it's actually really cool to kind of go ahead and see the way that they are approaching this. The models look absolutely beautiful and uh, yeah, I mean looking at this it makes me feel like I actually maybe want to do a Dunland campaign when this mod does come out. Speaking of a witch, the actual game is set two years before the formation of the Fellowship and you will actually be able to go ahead and join the fellowship if you attend the council of Rivendell, which is actually really exciting being able to lead the fellowship off into the corners of middle earth to try and destroy the ring just seems super exciting on top of that as well you can also oppose the formation of the fellowship i believe if you're siding with the forces of evil so maybe you kind of go in as a as a man and oppose the formation and maybe that can even prevent frodo from even taking the ring in the first place we'll have to see how that does develop so kingdom of Ardor is hands down looking like it's going to be one of the best mods for Bannerlord if they can go ahead and deliver on everything that they've said they're planning to. And I have 100% faith that they are going to do that they're really approaching this development of this mod in a very, very professional manner. So I am excited to see what they can produce and also uh, make sure you go ahead and check out uh, Macbeth's channel. I'll leave a link to that down below in the description as well. He's one of the developers on the mod and he has made a whole plethora of videos really going into their design philosophy what they're planning how they're approaching certain things so if the discord isn't enough for you definitely go check out his videos and of course definitely join their discord the next mod we are taking a look at is the amazing feudal japan mod which looks to go ahead and once again add in a completely custom campaign map really immerse you in the setting of 1568 ad with completely new custom unit trees many japanese warring factions all with their own unique armors and amazing voice lines and so much more the mod itself plans on having a total of 38 different factions which of course is perfect for the war and states 
The campaign map itself looks absolutely spectacular. They are really taking the time to really go ahead and take the life of Japan and import it into Bannerlord. The armors look incredible. They are going to heavy detail on just kind of some of the Lord armors, not to mention all the basic soldiers. And on top of that, they have also recently been showing some of the Portuguese merchant outfits and also Portuguese ships. So again, we're going to have a European, European presence actually implemented into the mod in whatever way they have stated that they're not going to have like a heavy european presence but there are going to be some notable factions they have also mentioned that naval travel isn't currently a priority in the mod unless tail worlds implement something that's that's not going to be their first priority to get that in maybe later on down the line they can go ahead and create their own system but for now the focus is going to be on the land battle side of things the mod is also going to have a completely custom castles as well so you're not going to be fighting over the cities of caradia you're going to be fighting over a complete plethora of custom Japanese feudal castles, which should hopefully make for extremely unique battlefields and also sieges. The mod also recently released a trailer which really goes ahead and showcases some of the beautiful custom scenery that they currently have in the mod, along with the armor. And the sheer attention to detail on just the minor things really makes me very, very excited to finally get to play this when it does hopefully release. And the sheer attention to detail in this mod really makes me very confident that they're going to absolutely smash this one out of the park. The next mod we have to look at is the Star Wars Separatist Crisis mod. This mod has currently been in development for for quite a while now and they are making pretty good progress considering just how ambitious the actual project is. This is the definition of truly changing Bannerlord forever because we are going to space. The mod itself plans are going ahead and completely changing the campaign map and I think the best way of describing how they're going to approach this is basically you're going to have these islands scattered throughout the universe and you can kind of think as planets as these islands. There's going to be multiple cities and zones of each planet on these islands which are represented by the planets and then all the space around it is basically just going to be sea and you're going to be moving across the sea from island to island however these islands are going to be represented by uh, planets so i'll be putting some screenshots up so you can kind of visualize it a bit better and i think that's a really clever way of approaching this having multiple zones and multiple i guess in quotation mark cities on a planet is a really smart way of doing it and that's going to completely keep you immersed in the world itself on on top of that, they are of course planning for several different factions, such as the Jedi, the Sith, the Mandalorians, clones, droids, and a ton more. Space battles are something that they are definitely looking into, but not something that they kind of immediately plan. They want to get the foundations of the mod implemented. However, we have seen stuff from modders like Block, who have implemented very basic forms of space combat in the Bannerlord engine, so who knows what is actually possible. And of course, this is still very, very, very early days, but they have also also mentioned as well that a few people who are working on the co-op mod are also part of their team so hopefully that is something that they will implement into their mod later on down the line. Separatist Crisis does definitely look like a mod that will have no comparison in the levels it takes Bannerlord and I highly recommend you keep up to date with the mod by checking out their discord down below in the description. The next mod on the list has to be the English Civil War mod War of the Roses. This mod is set in the 15th century of Great Britain during the later stages of the War of the Roses. And when I say you will be blown away by the sheer aesthetic of this mod, I am not joking. The current scenes that they have in it look absolutely spectacular. The cities that they have been showcasing over on their mod DB look extremely vast with all custom assets from, from city buildings to bridges to carts to ships. There is so much gloriousness right here in these screenshots. And that's not even to mention, of course, the armors, weaponry, heraldry, and so much more. The mod, of course, looks to have its completely custom campaign map, all with custom scenes for every one of the major cities and castles. There isn't actually a ton known about the current progress of the mod outside of these screenshots because they don't actually have a Discord where we can keep up to date with it. However, they do regularly post content to their mod DB, so that is by far the best place to keep up to date with it. And they recently actually made a post speaking about the current update to Bannerlord 1.1, allowing the modders to actually go ahead and add on custom heraldry to units and armors, depending on what faction they are a part of, which is, of course, a very, very exciting change. 
This mod looks to be absolutely perfect for those of you looking for historical accuracy in the medieval. Finally, but by no means least, we have In the Name of Jerusalem 2. This mod is currently set in 1187 and will basically lead to the fall of Constantinople in 1204. The mod currently is in early testing phases and hopefully will release later this year. It currently has an expansive map with tons of detail on the campaign map, several working factions from the Bulgarians to the Roman Empire to the Franks in the form of the Crusaders and of course the Ayyubid Sultanate with a vast empire stretching from the south of Egypt all the way off into the east. The modders have worked tirelessly on the armors and also the civilian clothing which shows in its immaculately presented cutscenes. Whenever you enter a city or village you immediately feel like you are immersed in this world just due to everybody's outfits. The mod also currently has naval travel implemented as well so you can lead crusades from, from the west and invade where you want to and that's not even mentioning the level of detail with the units the mod also has lance breaking feasts custom culture religion which will massively affect how you're approaching your conquest because in in the name of jerusalem 2 you can only recruit from your own culture this will make armies much more unique and also pacifying regions will be really important so that you can then recruit from them as they convert to your culture the mod also plans on starting off the player as part of a pre-existing realm so this will immediately throw you into the chaos of 1187 however you are going to be able to go ahead and leave that kingdom and go independent later on down the line if that is something that you do plan on doing the one itself is also heavily inspired by the kingdom of heaven movie so hopefully you guys will be able to see a lot of flavor from that movie in this mod five mods that i am extremely excited for for mountain blade 2 banner lord let me know what you guys thought of them and let me know what one you guys are most anticipating down below in the comments also let me know if i missed one of the mods that you are most looking forward to and maybe i can cover that in another video if you enjoyed be sure to go ahead and subscribe we are currently closing in on 210,000 subscribers so i'd really appreciate it drop a like down below and i'll see you guys in the next one